So this is how I fixed my Razer Nari Ultimate dongle. They have hardware problems. Luckily, it's not apparently software. It's not them updating and bricking your dongle. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. I have the right tools. Be very careful, obviously, with Exactos. Uh, it involves reflowing the solder on surface mount components. They're very tiny, smaller than grains of rice. Uh, so if you don't have a reflow, uh, you can do it in the oven. Make sure that you're comfortable doing that. But honestly, the thing's dead, so you may as well give it a shot. Basically, you could do this out of order. I, I kind of did it in the wrong order, but it's a little easier when it's bigger to hold on to with the metal. But uh, cutting it and then removing the pieces before I pull off the metal retainer here, which holds the two halves together. You insert the blade on away from the, the plastic block side of the connector to get underneath those little retaining clips that are that are crimped in. Getting the blade underneath. This will allow it so you can pull it apart and pry it apart, but you can still get it back together and it'll work. And at first, once you go for reassembly after all this stuff, obviously don't glue it yet until you verify that you've done it and it's fixed. Those are the two little crimping retaining guys here that are holding it. So at some point you can get it moving and then you can get a screwdriver in to pry it apart the rest of the way. And there's your main board. So this is a reflow workstation and soldering station. You probably don't have one of these at home. Um, if you do, awesome. Just make sure it's low airflow so that you don't, if you do actually unseat something and uh, get it loose enough, it doesn't blow away. And again, you can you can do this with an oven or a toaster oven at home too. Same procedure. Uh, go lower than the recommended temperature. Uh, like this took, I, I went a little higher than you normally do with the reflow, but I'm only on it for you'll see just a few seconds. But start low. You can work your way up. You can go back, snap the thing together, try it, verify it works. Uh, you don't want to start off, you know, too high and have a component drop off or something if you bump it or whatever. The idea is just to melt the solder enough to close the crack wherever it happens to be. And there's components on the reverse side too, so obviously in an oven it won't matter, but... Again, less is more on the heat on this. Because if you do dislodge something, it's going to be unrecoverable. Better to have, like not have it work and go back and go a little hotter. If you do dislodge something, good luck ever finding it and getting it back in the right place. So that's a little hole, obviously, and it'll line up to the case hole, too or the little pin on there. And it just more or less snaps back the other way it came apart, and then you can slide the retainer over. It'll be a lot easier to get back apart if you need to, like I said, if you're going slow and up in the temps. Um, 
this fixed mine on the first shot at these temps in those times with that reflow, but obviously your mileage will vary with an oven. Um, yeah, it just sucks when, you know, hardware has problems like this and then you're out of support and you're out of luck, but this is something it, again, worth trying at home. If you know, like if it's already dead, why not? What are you going to make it more dead? It doesn't, you know, give it a shot. And if you fix it, you'll be super happy and satisfying and you know, good. And don't buy a razor again. <laughs> That's the-